to leave it once again. Uh, in fact, I wanted to cancel the class, but I didn't. Instead, I thought I should uh, do the session like half time, uh, so that uh, I didn't want to do that. Uh, but some people didn't purposely uh, come assuming that I will not teach today. It's okay. So, let me start, start by saying something. I am guilty that I have to do the session half time today. Do you know why I said that? Today's topic is guilt. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, 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 guilt is something that I have been researching for many, many years. Uh, pardon my voice. Um, so, uh, and then uh, I had to read a lot of sutras as well as uh, Abhidharma, the Buddhist psychological texts. Um, so, uh, in general terms, I want to uh, take it down, I will read it out slowly because I didn't want to miss a word, so that's why I have like, yeah, it uh, written on a piece of paper. So, in general terms, guilt is the fact of having committed a specified or implied offence or crime. Don't worry, I've already told that as many times uh, as uh, you want me to. So in general terms, guilt is the fact of having committed a specified or implied offence or crime. In Buddhist psychology, guilt has a broad meaning. And is of what meaning? Broad meaning. Broad meaning. Yeah, broad meaning come up and and broad meaning come up and is often defined in light of bad karma or sin bad karma or sin that's in light of one first one bad karma or sin two wrong conclusion And three, social, social, cultural, and legal norms of good and evil based on the countries or lands. I will all read, uh, read out again. So, in general terms, guilt is the fact of having committed a specified or implied offense or crime. So start again. In Buddhist psychology, Guilt has a broad meaning, come up, and is often defined in light of one, bad karma or sin, two, wrong conclusion, three, social, cultural, and legal norms of good and evil. Now, uh, <clears throat> um, based on this definition of guilt in, in Buddhism, there are uh, four types of guilt. Four types of guilt. Before that, let me uh, share a story from, uh, from Buddhist literature. And some of you may already know the story. Now, uh, there was a, uh, a Naga king or a, a cobra 
uh, during the time of Buddha Gautama, the current Buddha. And one day Buddha happened to uh, disclose that cobra's past life, why he became a cobra. Uh, he which one? Naga. Naga is also an English word now. Naga is, uh, most people know what Naga is, it's a cobra. He which snake, serpent. Now, uh, in one of in one, during the time of one uh, previous Buddha, Kassapa, he was uh, a, a virtuous Buddhist monk. He was so virtuous, um, uh, so uh, good, that he wouldn't even uh, cause harm to an inanimate object. And, uh, and he was one who would, who would be easily guilty. And so that, he was so good. He had never done anything wrong. But one day, he happened to, uh, he lived on an island. He happened to uh, travel to another uh, place, another island of the mainland, uh, by boat. Now, when he was in the boat, he accidentally caused a grass blade to be broken off while getting into the boat. He simply, so that's what it is no, I think, no offense at all. Right? You, you do, uh, you move your lawn, right? And you cut your grass. And nowadays people are uh, talking about deforestation and uh, uh, rising sea levels and climate change and all that. Right? People are never guilty. Right? So this death has a huge. Uh, outcry, the public outcry in Sri Lanka these days because politicians have been destroying forests. So that's why this is the that attracted world attention as well. So in the case of this monk, uh, he was so good. When uh, when he co accidentally caused uh, uh, a grass blade uh, to be broken off and then he was unresponsible for that. But then he, he became so guilty and he thought to himself, I haven't done anything wrong to anyone. I have never caused any um, harm to anyone or anything. Uh, but I did this. And so as a result, at his last thought moment, um, so uh, usually this is a, uh, like a Buddhist psychology class, not a parapsychology, even though parapsychology is one of my favorite areas. Probably one day we will have one discussion, not in this session not as part of this class, maybe some other time. So, uh, now he was so guilty. So at his last thought moment, that is according to Buddhist uh, teachings on consciousness, uh, death psychology, uh, according to Buddhist death psychology, last thought moment is the moment before you breathe your last breath. And at which time uh, your consciousness opens up and a certain uh, karma would trigger your next birth. If there is a certain karma that you revisit, uh, there is a probability that if, uh, the more you revisit certain karmas, there is a higher probability that you keep those karmas uh, close to the surface level of your consciousness. As a result, that uh, a certain karma, the karma that triggers your next birth, would be one of those karmic seeds uh, uh, now uh, close to the surface level. So in his case, uh, ever since it happened, so uh, he lived his life with guilt. And as a result, at his last thought moment, uh, we call uh, this monk life abbreviations, acronyms, acronyms. So uh, during his uh, LTM. Last thought moment. You can remember that well, that way, much more easily. During his uh, LTM, last thought moment, uh, it was that guilt that triggers uh, his birth. And what happened was, <coughs> what happened was, um, he was reborn a cobra. Uh, and then he would uh, come to that tree, and then he would protect the tree. He would coil around the tree and protect it because of his guilt. Even if you don't believe in past life or future, 
on afterlife, past life or afterlife, within this lifetime, when, when every time you relive your guilt, you uh, reactivate it and then uh, so that uh, you go through some kind of despair. Just forget about past life and afterlife. What uh, something happened, what about something that happened like 15 years ago and you are still guilty? And then many millions of times in your head, in your heart, you feel like uh, struggling to rectify that mistake. So that's what happened to him. To pay off his uh, guilt, to pay off his debt to the tree, and he came back as a as a, a huge cobra. Uh, so ever since, and then he would uh, protect the tree. So that means I, I always like that story. My mother told me a story when I was like seven years old, seven eight years old, and that was how she taught me um, about uh, guilt. Now, uh, so that now, uh, so the background of the girl, background of the girl is that it is uh, based on, uh, so it is to be understood in terms of bad karma or sin. Now, uh, if you have, when it comes to karma, karma, as we mentioned in one of our previous sessions, um, is understood uh, in, in terms of um, fate or destiny or kismet, whatever the English words that you use. Uh, but uh, but karma is not fate, for sure, strictly in the Buddhist sense. Probably for certain Indian religions, karma is identified with uh, fate, but in Buddhism, karma is not fate, because fate is, uh, fate cannot be resisted, resisted, it is irresistible. Whereas karma is resistible, how? Because you create, a, you create your own karma, and uh, you are the master of your karma. Once created, karma would uh, uh, remain in your, as part of your uh, existence, your life, your consciousness, your soul. But it's way different than guilt, uh, way different than uh, <coughs> fate. Because fate is connected to an external force, like the divine or the God, God or according to many religions. Whereas in Buddhism, karma is purely internal. It is not an external force. It is not an. It is not a vertical force. There's no vertical connection. Karma has no vertical connection with anything else. It is within. It is internal, internalized. So, karma, while once created, uh, karma can rule you over in certain points, but not necessarily. Uh, there are certain karmas that you cannot resist, you cannot avoid. But in general, even if uh, a certain karma is as powerful as a tornado or a volcanic eruption, you can still reduce the gravity of that karma. When you keep your, yourself emotionally uh, stronger, whereas uh, in the case of minor karma, uh, could even have an effect similar to that of uh, a volcanic eruption or a tornado when you are emotionally weaker. And then you can even, because karma, according to Buddhist definition, is, uh, is, is volitional, is intentional. Your volition, your intention is karma. Why not plant new intentions? Uh, by planting new intentions, by thinking new thoughts, uh, so that you can at least, you can do two things. You can reduce the gravity of bad karma, at the same time you can re increase the, the, the power of good karma as well. And then we can either reduce the gravity of bad karma, effect of bad force of bad karma, or you can push uh, they push those karmas to the sides. So as for new good karmas uh, to return. So, uh, and so that is why 
karma is not fate. Uh, people always believe that. But interestingly, I noticed that. I thought that it, it is only in the predominantly Buddhist nations that people put the blame on karma when they um, fail to secure a job promotion or win a lottery. But no, it's everywhere. In America also I noticed that. Sometimes people say that they, to them karma is necessarily something bad. Why? You, you, uh, you win uh, a jackpot uh, lottery. And people hardly say it's my karma. But I think it is, it is a good karma. You simply say it is my luck, my fortune. But you only apply the good back the term karma into negative situations. But I think it is good karma. If you say that it's good karma as well. Um, recently in the gathering when I told I met I could reunite with one of my long lost friends. Then I told him um, when I met him. Uh, in Sri Lanka, I told him, it's my good karma that I met my, I am just uh, talking to my long lost friend. And immediately he told me, I learned something, you told me something. And I asked, why? Because it's my good karma, it, no, it's my karma that I met you. And then why? Why did you say you learned something? No, up to this moment I thought karma is necessarily something bad. So, it's both. But people, are more concerned with uh, negative situations, so that, so that is why. That is why people think that uh, um, karma is bad. No, anyway, karma is both good and bad. But in a way, uh, it's okay to uh, look at karma as something that has a negative connotation. Why? Because uh, it helps you, it is preventive then. It can take some preventive measures. Um, so that is that is why in, in one of previous sessions I mentioned that karma is considered an individual. Karma is deified or personified, in, especially in Western countries. Okay, I'm going to like like when 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 the mom when mom means now giving a piece of advice to his kid and say the kid say okay don't do that again. I'm going to uh, call. Karma, and karma will come after you. And the children also say that I hate that karma guy. Um, so that uh, in a way that's good. I like that. It's kind of fascinating because that's why you personify, you deify, you personify your own uh, bad action, and and then you you feel you, you think as though uh, uh, something is watching you, or like your own karma is watching you. I like that psychological shift uh, in the West. You would miss that lady think that that's luck. Sorry? One would miscalculate and think it's luck. That's right, yeah. Some people do. Actually, they also do. They miscalculate. They miscalculate and think it's luck. People do that too. <coughs> Sorry. You are right. Um, so, and then, so that is uh, karma in light of bad karma or sin. Now, uh, sin is basically a Christian term, but we also we use that term in Buddhism too. Sin, sinful, sinner. It's, I like that word, sin, <coughs> especially in the West. It it it, it, it conveys the message that we want uh, the term karma to to deliver uh, a convey. So karma. Guilt is to be understood in light of karma or sin, first, that is the first. Second one is wrong conclusion. Uh, karma is also to be understood uh, in terms of wrong conclusion, uh, sorry, guilt, what is that? Now, wrong conclusion is, now uh, some people, now it's, it's a life situation. Um, I have spoken to certain judges. Uh, in different countries, uh, from different levels. One Supreme Court, Superior Court, another a few uh, magistrates. And at the time they come for uh, discussions. They have told me that years later, they started feeling guilty of their verdicts. Um, so that uh, it happens to us too. Now, uh, 
just forget about that. That is a legal thing. But apart from that, now what we talk about this. Now uh, you happen to, uh, let's say, uh, your children uh, wants you to buy them certain things that you may not be able to afford to buy, and and so that you happen to say no. Oh, even if it is affordable, you still say no. And then, and it's a conclusion, so that you are guilty. To make more clear, now, uh, you, your son, your daughter has like maybe ten pairs of shoes. Whenever, and you, you spoil your children, suppose, and you spoil your children. And then somehow one day you have to say no, really hard. And since ever since you are guilty, actually you made the right decision. You stop uh, spoiling your uh, children any further because they only have ten pairs of shoes. And you are still guilty. Now you are guilty. Now uh, so that is also that is called uh, situation based. Uh, 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 conclusion-based guilt. These are simple situations that we are talking about and it will become more clear when you talk about the actual types of guilt. Now these three situations are simply background to guilt, background information. Uh, and third one is social, cultural and legal norms of good and evil. And then uh, once, once Buddha was asked what is wrong, what is right in, term, in ethical terms. And Buddha said, there are hmm, universal, there is universal.